there's a huge capital outlay with a huge call on materials that's required to do all those things, which will constrain the build out of renewables, which is clearly critical and needed. You just can't do it fast enough. <clears throat> and even in this process, you know, oil, the slide on the right shows that oil at one point was 50% of the world's energy consumption and now only 30% of the world's energy consumption. But it's okay over that period of time, it's gone from 30 million barrels to 100 million barrels. So this year, right, there'll be a new peak in it. So therefore, the gross amount of oil and gas that's going to be needed is higher than where you are today. It's been significant underinvestment. So I don't think the world understands, and having been an investor in energy, oil for 50 years, I don't think the world understands where we are today. And where we are today is his book, of course, was the idea that the Saudis' ability to grow production was limited. And of course, it's been it disproven. It didn't happen. It went away. The fact of the matter is today, look again, maybe it's true. The Saudis are saying that themselves. Of course, nobody believes what the Saudis say. They're talking up their own book. They say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And one of the things is the offshore rig counts going from 60 to 100 wells next year. There's a dramatic ramp up. And so they're not drilling onshore, just. They've run out of that. They've got to go offshore. So therefore, their search for oil and new production really indicates that there's limits to their capability. So the fact of the matter is, with natural gas, it's problematic. With oil, you find it, you can get it to where you want it. With natural gas, once you find it, to get it to where you want it, you got to build out three pieces of infrastructure. You got to refrigerate it, you got to transport it, you got to regasify it. And each one of those has to be built either simultaneously or in some process. So that will delay the development of natural gas. So industrial businesses in North America is where we started, where a lot of our investments are, where we think there's a lot of opportunities. We talked about those industries have consolidated down dramatically, many fewer players, rational competitors, totally different environment. The other thing is North America, if it's an industrial business, you're competitively advantaged because you have lower energy prices here and you will for at least the next 10 years. Right, the inability to move natural gas out of North America means we have an oversupply. China is a high cost place that imports its energy, imports oil and raw materials today because they make so much of everything that they have to import the iron ore and the steel uh, and the, uh, the metallurgical coal because they use all the stuff they have. They need incremental supplies. So they're tied into the world market and they're the ones who really set prices. The cake is the fact that it's energy, you know, whether, you, whether Yara is going to build a fertilizer plant in Corpus Christi is not predicated on the Inflation Reduction Act. It's predicated on the fact that he can use natural gas to make fertilizers at a fraction of the price of what he can in his European plant. So he's going to make the plant here. So therefore, business will continue to migrate because there are competitive advantages. So not only do you have lower costs, of course, you're in market. You don't need to transport it. You're already here. In addition, ammonia is the intermediate product that you make to make fertilizer. Ammonia's usage as part of the new economy is, and new climate issues is going to be tremendous. It's, it's going to grow. So there's a huge growth opportunity for that intermediate product they make, ammonia, uh, and including the ability to move hydrogen with the use of ammonia. So it ties into a lot of where energy is moving that makes for new, new end market demands, and the stocks are extremely cheap at valuations that really are disconnected from a 3.5% treasury. Look at the old information they talk about, the, the substantial reduction in volatility in their business. At the low point in the cycle, they're generating a billion dollars. The stock has a $7 billion valuation today, so it's got a 12%, uh, 13% <clears throat> free cash flow yield. And what are they doing to money? They're buying back stocks, so therefore they're increasing the per share value. And that business is one that, and North American producers of chloralkalide are the lowest cost producers because Electricity prices and gas prices in North America are cheaper than they are in the rest of the developed world. Canadian energy, uh, you know, I'm on the board of a couple of Canadian energy companies. The stocks trade for single digit PE multiples, free cash flow. They sustain production, grow production some, and generate all this extra money. So the valuation is just wrong, but nobody wants to own them because it's an energy company.